Hey everyone, this is Adam with Coral Clarity Mentorship, and today we are talking with one of our successful choir directors, Joey Hoffman. And today we are going to be diving deep into how the Coral Clarity Mentorship has impacted his teaching and his life. Joey, thank you for joining me today. Hey. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your current job position, and how long you've been there? Sure, yeah. I'm Joey Hoffman, I'm currently I'm originally from the St. Louis, Missouri area. I went to college in, at Southeast Missouri State in Cape Girardeau. I graduated in the fall or the spring of 2023 with vocal music education. I'm currently the middle school choir teacher at Perry County Middle School in Perryville, Missouri. I teach three classes of sixth grade choir and three classes of seventh and eighth grade choir. Um, and I, this is my first year of teaching. Awesome. So what motivated you to book the initial call with me? And what were you feeling at the time? At the time, I was really going through a hard time. I had just gotten, I had just gotten spoken to by my school's administration, talking about how my performance wasn't the best. And I even knew that there were a lot of things that I needed to change. I was kind of at a really tough crossroads where I needed to, I just knew something needed to change. And Adam, the person of the Coral Clarity actually had recently friended me on social media and randomly reached out to me one day and I was he was wanting to know what how things were going and I and I just finally decided to be completely honest with him saying I'm at I'm at a very tough part of my school year right now things are not going the best I'm extremely stressed out right now and we and he told me to book a call with him and so we talked about it I explained to him what my situation was at the time and it just and he just told me you know this is something I'm doing now and I'd love to help you out so I reached out further and he encouraged me to go ahead and try out the member mentorship and things really turned around a little bit. The second semester things, I wouldn't say like got perfect to the point in the school year, but it just got to the point where things were a lot more manageable for me. And I wasn't as stressed out every day because things were just, things were just at a very tough thing. And I was, I was to the point where I was even considering leaving teaching at the time or moving to a different grade level. And I'm taking another position in a middle school next year, knowing that the thing I can actually do something. Awesome. So what challenges were you facing before working with us? The challenges I was facing were like, I, I was basically feeling like I was in constant battle with the control of my classroom. I was getting very little done during the day. We, I had classes where we weren't even singing every day because behaviors were just so bad. I was to the point where I was just assigning other stuff that wasn't, that had nothing to do with singing in class. Um, one of my choirs, con one of my classes concerts were taken away because of things. And it, it was just to the point where, like, my school's administration was on to me saying, you know, you're not controlling your class very well. And it just, it just got to the point where I was like, I was at a crossroads where I just wanted out of that place at that exact moment. Mm. And what has the Coral Clarity Mentorship done to help you? The Coral Clarity Mentorship really helped me restore that I was, my confidence in being able to teach choir. It's really helped me in knowing that, you know, this is what you need to do to improve. Um, like in before, like knowing that before I could even go anywhere further into choir stuff, like, you know, how, how can I keep control of my classroom? How can I make sure I'm holding students accountable when they're doing stuff they shouldn't be doing? Um, how am I connecting with my students every day? Um, if I may say, you know, now, like given it's getting close to the end of the school year, it's almost May. Um, some of my sixth grade classes on to the point where I'm out in the hallway every day where I'm like, we're, we've been doing map testing the last two, the last two weeks. And we've had block scheduling, which we normally don't do. And days I only see my sixth graders, it's to the point where it's hitting me. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to be leaving these kids here in a few weeks. And it's just, it's just, I could just tell by the way I'm seeing their interactions in the hallway that I've really built such positive relationships. I made positive impact and it's just hitting me now. It's like, man, I'm going to be leaving these kids soon. It's, it's, it's just awesome. Like I've been, I've been noticing that the last week and it's, I just love that. I love to hear that. And could you describe like what, describe the experience of the Coral Clarity Mentorship? What was the process like for you? The process to me was, I noticed like Adam had helped, told me you need to create a mission statement. What is your mission? And that, that was something else that really kind of clicked to me that, you know, I need to have a clear why on what, what my, what, what is my why of what I want my program to look like? What is my why of how I want, how I want to structure my classes? What, like, and knowing, like anything you do, you can't just go in there and say, this is how things are going to be. No questions asked. You want to have a clear why, because something I learned this year, just from being a first year teacher and later on in the school year that I, if, that if you would have asked me this in August, I would have had no clue what you were talking about is when you, when you set class expectations, when you, 
when you want to have, when you want to organize your class a certain way, you need to make sure you're able to explain why instead of just making, telling your students, this is how it's going to be. Because anytime, any, any little confusion in why your class is the way it is, the students are just going to go off the walls from there because they're like, we don't know why you want to do this. Why should we care if you don't seem to care? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So how is the mentorship different than your college experience? Because you just came out of college, you started your job, and now you joined the mentorship. What makes this different? The difference in what the mentorship is, is that in college, it didn't really seem like there was a whole lot of like being able to talk about what in-classroom experiences are. Because here in the mentorship, you get to hear a whole lot of different perspectives from people in the, men in the mentorship calls and hear what different challenges people face were in college. The most you can do in a say if you're sitting in a pedagogy class is think about things because it's teaching is something I've learned especially um is that teaching is such a broad concept teaching is such a there's so much to it that college can't unfortunately teach you everything where whenever you enter your classroom your first year you're so much is thrown at you at one time and then you're and I feel like in the mentorship person you're able to ask experienced teachers like that are in the mentorship with you, like what are some things, what are some things that you do to fix this? Like how would you handle these types of situations and just gain ideas and kind of figure out what floats your boat? Because what works for one teacher may not work for another, but if you're with a whole group of current teachers who are currently in the classroom, you're able to ask these types of questions, you're able to gain insights and potentially build some ideas on how to fix things. Because there's a lot of things I've learned this year that that I would definitely do differently if I could go back in time in August and fix things. And Something else that I would something else I would say if if a new if a new teacher is going to see this something I would tell you especially if you're in a middle school classroom meet your students where you are because if you don't meet your students where you are and you're just shoving things down their throats they're going to quickly learn to like think that wow this guy is no fun at all this guy just wants to see the end result where if you meet students where they are and get and are able to kind of help them help guide them and meet and connect with them in ways instead of just constantly focusing on the end result, whether your concert's in October, whether your concert's in December or November, meet them where they are, because otherwise you can't, you can't get anywhere near, you can't get any further if you don't meet them where they are in the middle. Awesome. So what sort of results do you feel you got as a result of working, uh, being part of the mentorship program? You're saying what results? Yeah, what results? Um, results that I got that I was able to see, especially within a couple of weeks of implementing the new management plan that I did was that especially my my sixth grade classes for sure, my seventh and eighth grade class were a little bit of a different story, but the sixth grade classes where they were not so bad at first, like they were there was a little bit of calling out. But once I established the guidelines and was being consistent in enforcing them, I I noticed that whenever I was in the front of the room talking, I I noticed that the class was a lot more quiet instead of there was a lot less calling out. And those were some of the issues that I that I was dealing with. That's one of the results. The other result was that instead of reacting in a negative way to students, I was I just started reacting with a smile when they acted up. And it was really there was one particular class I can think of that was driving the per, the particular culprits that I was dealing with constantly crazy. They were like, "Why are, why are you smiling?" Because I was reacting in an entirely different way. I still smile to some. I can I can picture the exact moment that I was doing, and I can picture the exact moment they were asking that question. But I just think that, and I even told a few of my good students that I pulled aside and asked them some questions about what I want to hear a student perspective. And I got some good, I got some good things. I pulled a few students aside in a, during my playing time that but with the permission of their current teacher and asked them, what are some things you like about being in my classroom? And there were some of them, I can't remember the, I had them written down somewhere, but they were, they were like saying that I'm fun, saying that I like to joke a lot. And it was definitely good to see that there was, that was a, that was um, a, perspective of a particular student. And, and this particular class, if I may say, you know, in the last week, like I said, I've been with them a lot longer period of time in the class than I normally am. And I can just tell that can I even, even those that may, they may not always participate fully in the class, they still know that I love them. They still know that I appreciate them being in my class. And I can just by the way, I'm interacting with them. And that's definitely something that's hitting me now. Awesome. Very cool. And how did that impact you? It impact like how did the it, how did the interactions with the students? No, how did the results, the changes of what was happening in the classroom, the results that you've gotten, how did that impact you? It impacted me. Think showing me that you are able to control your class, showing me that you are able to react in not an anger way. Because beforehand, I was getting mad. I was getting mad a lot. I still think that Adam telling me about his first few years of teaching, like you know, I was I felt like I was getting mad a lot. I felt like I was just 
wanting to throw my books across the room because students weren't doing what I wanted them to do. And I just feel like the fact that I was reacting to their misbehaving in a much more positive way and showing them that, hey, you know, you think you can just sit here and break me like this. That's not going to happen. This is not your classroom. This is my classroom. And I just feel like that it really restored com some confidence that I had been losing constantly because of all the stress I'd been going through, not just not just the stress of the fact that students were misbehaving a lot, but the fact that I just felt like I was going nowhere and that, you know, everyone in the school was mad at me because of the job I was doing. And I just, I just feel like it really helped make me feel a lot better. Awesome. So just bouncing off that, how has your life changed since joining our mentorship? My life has definitely changed in ways of just feeling more positive, feeling more like that I can do this. Like I've been looking through a lot of p possible resources to bring into my new classroom next year, um, reading on different things I can connect on ways you can connect with students, different activities I can do. Um, I just feel like there's that you just have to really go out there and try because if you just are constant, I just feel like that it's really showing me that, you know, you give, giving me the confidence that I can try to do things because I just feel like if you aren't going to try to do things, what's the point of there being a better result if, it, and nothing's going to change. So you know, going in, knowing that your students can do things, giving the, just giving them a shot to try it out, see how it goes. And even if it doesn't work the first time, it doesn't mean you need to instantly throw it in the garbage can. Um, try it again the next day, maybe modify it a little bit, like saying, okay, I real, excuse me, just say like, I realized that this didn't work quite well this way. Let's try it this way today. And, and any, and to new teachers that are listening to this, uh, even if your students are going to sit there and complain, that's just, especially if you're a middle school teacher, that's just the way that they may be like, ignore the complaining, tell them that, no, we're still going to do this. You may or may not like it. And what students may not like the first time, they may come to like it a little bit later. Mm, awesome. And where do you think you would have been if you didn't join the mentorship program? Oh, gosh. Um, um, I just feel I feel like things would not have turned around as well as they did. I feel like that the things that I have learned from the, from what I was doing wrong the beginning of the year to now may not have come as soon as it did. And because I will say a lot of things that just by kind of learning about like what what are what's going wrong here, I feel like things would definitely have not have changed the way they should have. Um, and I just feel like that, I just feel like I would have still been in the same stressful boat that I was in back in November, and December, because things, and I just feel like things would not have done as well. Cause I, cause something else I've learned is that whenever, is that whenever you're, whenever you're a new, a new teacher, especially definitely look for new things to bring into your classroom. I would say maybe weekly, maybe not daily. Cause that may be a lot, but weekly, because I, I've also learned that if you're constantly doing the same things over and over and over again, your students are going to end up falling asleep. The next thing you know, you're going to have like maybe half your class participating. You may you may be lucky and have a class like I did that was singing almost all the time, regardless. But not all your classes are going to be like that, and sometimes you sometimes that could be none of your classes. If there if there is anyone who is maybe on the fence about working with us or booking a call to speak with us, what would you tell them? Um, I would say, depending on your situation, definitely go ahead and do it because what, what I learned is that if you're not, if you're not really, if you're not going to want to try to do new things, then it's, it's going to be tough because yes, there are, there may be other resources out there. I'm not sure what, what may be causing you to do this for me. It was definitely classroom management, but for you, it could be, you could be struggling with having students matching pitch. It could be a number of things. There's so many different things that Adam offers here. Not just not just classroom management because if you're if you feel like you're golden on classroom management or you're at a place that is manageable but you want to do other things, definitely still go for it because it was definitely beneficial for me. My priority was classroom management. That's mostly what I've been working with because if you don't have control, from what I learned, if you don't have control of your class, there's not a whole lot more you can do because you're only going to have half, if not none, of your students' attention. Awesome. Well, Joey, thank you so much, and for everybody listening out there. You know, we have teachers of all different ages and ranges of experience <clears throat> from first year teachers to 25 and 30 year veterans. And working together has been uh, one of the real key things that has helped uh, choral directors that they get to work together and learn from one another. So, Joey, thank you so much for your time. And uh, and I'll see you uh, at the next mentorship meeting. Thank you. Okay.